I'm Ando Palo, and this is SEO in 2024. Ando, what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? So my number one tip is regarding migrations and relaunches. And if you are a company where you heavily rely on SEO in your marketing mix and you are planning a, a relaunch the next year or the, even the year after, then you should first really, really take SEO seriously from the very beginning. You should invest in additional tools you have not used yet. And you should probably also get external support during that period. So why are additional tools required? I mean, additional tools are or challenge actually yourself a little bit or the, you know, the, the, the SEO team involved. Sometimes you really have blind spot. You use the same tools again and again and again. And especially during immigration, where really a lot of things are changing, it helps to add additional data layers. And I mean, also the tools are not always show you the same. Sometimes they interpret data a little bit different. Some tools really show things others don't. And when you do migration, you really want to yeah, have the best possible setup, actually. And that's why I always refer to or recommend to add some tools. But I guess the challenge with getting a new tool is um, you don't have historical data there from the new tool, or, or do you? Uh, I mean, for instance, obviously, when you're using a new tool, you want to be able to look back on previous performance of the website to compare how the website's performing after your migration, or is that not an issue? I mean, that is one part of, of tools, maybe. So everything regarding performance and, you know, measure of rankings and traffic and things like that, that wasn't actually what, what I have in mind. For me, it was more from, from a technical point of view. So... When we talk about crawling, indexing, and all that kind of stuff, it really is helpful to, again, add tools to get different data layers because sometimes you really see then more information. You'd see the same information maybe presented differently, and that makes you simply more aware of, of changes which have made, actually. It's not so much about, you know, the performance uh, itself, um, this can be, you know, measured in, in one tool and monitored in one tool. That's fine. But especially if you test things, then it is really important to, to add new tools, I think. Understood. So it's what the Americans would call belt and braces. Um, so they, they, they'd have <laughs> multiple tools doing the same thing, but possibly slightly different things just to make sure that tragedy doesn't occur. Yeah, I mean, and especially for migration, I think it is, it is really important. Um, let, me, let me give you some examples. I mean, we have seen several you know, migrations again, unfortunately, in 2023, which went utterly wrong from an SEO perspective. And some of them definitely could have been you know, prevented when the tool stack actually would have been extended, at least in, in, in my point of view. So there was a migration, for example, in Germany, where a huge e-commerce company did a relaunch on three on their, their, their shops, actually, on three on their websites. And they all had the same problem, which led to the fact that 80% of their entire website got de-indexed after the migration because there was a second head within the source code opened and there was a no index tag. And Google, of course, recognized that and simply throw them out of the index. And that would have been, you know, recognizable with, with some tools, at least, in, in SEO. and. I mean, there, there are so many other, other examples which, which went bad. We have seen actually a, a relaunch where, again, a huge loss of visibility happened because the internal licking scheme was really changed heavily during that migration. And you could look at the website before and you could look at the website after and it was quite clear that you know, a lot of prioritization has been moved and things like that. That can, again, be spotted with the right tools. And if you're aware of these things, I even saw, you know, the, the, the guys from Geefs and Hawks in, in, in London, several row, they did a migration, they relaunched their shop actually, or they relaunched their website, I would say, and they, they just placed a static coming soon page for several weeks on the website and they lost everything, so. And is that something that they could they easily recover from that quite quickly or is that something that took weeks or even months to get the traffic back? 
uh, I think it, it depends on the case. So the, the, the index case, for example, you can probably quite good, you know, recover from that because if you remove the new index, then actually you get recrawled and then you probably get back to where you have been in, in case the migration itself was, was okay. You know, I mean, the, if you, if you present a static coming soon page, it definitely depends on what does the website looks after that. However, a static coming soon page shouldn't be appear in, in 2023 and, and, and ongoing. But, um, if you, for example, remove entire sections of your website, then of course you will lose that organic reach and the connected traffic and the connected revenue. And this is also definitely something which is important during a migration process to make everyone clear that if changes are made, maybe on, on content, if specific sections are removed, which have been, you know, driven revenue maybe before, everyone needs to understand that this is actually maybe going away after immigration. Is there a typical type of migration that tends to be an issue? Because obviously a migration could be something as simple as a, as a redesign, it could be a server move, it could be a domain move, look at lots of different things. So I mean, ideally, you don't want to be doing everything at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. At least that's, the, I think, the, the common sense in SEO. So we, we definitely have different types of migration. As you said, it, it, could, be, it could be more or less a, a rebrush or, you know, something like that, which happens on the same system, maybe. Yeah, it's just a, a change of a layout or something like that. That could be one, one part. It could be a domain switch, so everything stays the same, but you move maybe from one domain to another because you, you changed your brand or you go from a country code directed domain to a generic domain. And of course, there can be, you know, a mix up of changing contents and changing domains and changing URLs. And these, of course, are oftentimes the most complex one and where sometimes it makes sense to, yeah, simply do some parts maybe before the big change and maybe some, some things after that so that you can really better understand what impacts actually changes. So what tools would you like to recommend that SEOs try? Because obviously you talked about using new tools and ensuring that you had as much data as possible. So what do you like to use? Yeah, I, f I mean, I, I, a little bit, it depends on, on the tools that you already have. So let, let me say it in categories. So you definitely need at least one, if, if not two, maybe tools related to, to crawling, indexing and all that kinds of stuff. So you definitely need something for performance. You definitely need something for monitoring site speed. You definitely want log files be involved, at least if you are a domain of, you know, of a certain size and things like that. And then of course, sometimes it even goes deeper into own develop, maybe smaller things or so. I mean, there, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of good solutions out there as you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm ambassador, for example, for Uncrawl, so I use that as well, but there are so many good tools outside, so many good crawling tools outside, um, so many good suites outside, just look what, what suits you best actually. So the challenge that many SEOs have is when they're working in large organizations, quite often departments make decisions without SEOs even being aware of them for certain migrations to happen. Um, so what does an SEO need to do uh, to try to ensure that they're on top of everything that could impact organic success? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. So I think generally speaking, for a migration process, a clear and transparent communication is one of the most important things. You need to, you know, communicate really precisely and, and transparent what happens actually, um, what are maybe also your expectations. You need to understand what are the expectations from others. We, we often, you know, from an SEO perspective, see just the website, but when a migration or relaunch happens, actually, it's a opportunity and also risk for the company because sometimes they, they, they may have the, the website as a center point at the very beginning. And then maybe they, they think, well, we could use the same data maybe for other applications as well. So they are moving away from this monolith CM system to, to a headless system. And then of course, there comes a lot of expectations and requirements from other departments. And I think every company is, should have in mind that they need to get all these um, expectations uh, together and they need to understand it and then Again, SEO needs to, yeah, 
have its share on that. Um, they need to understand what are the expectations maybe from others. They may can match that with their own. And SEO definitely always needs to understand that what is the revenue driver maybe right now? And for example, if it is SEO and it is the website and now it comes to a process where a lot of other things get involved, then SEO always need to also communicate, well, please have a mind. This is our most important, you know, channel right now for, for, for revenue. And we should have this in mind when we take decisions for maybe other departments, for other solutions and something like that. You talk about revenue there. Is that how an SEO should communicate with a, a business leader uh, about the potential downside of a migration? Yeah, I, I mean, I think yes, because revenue is what, you know, is mostly the most important metric or KPI for for the C-level. But of course, it, it, you know, there are a lot of things coming after that. But I think if you have the the information about revenue, I think revenue is very important. And if you have, if your data is good enough and you really can segment actually revenue to specific sections of your website, to specific topics or products or whatever, and they got discussed during the process, you can always refer to that and say, well, think about it. This makes maybe 20% of our revenue. If we remove that, for example, that means in the end that we not only lose the revenue which we have right now, we also maybe lose all the revenue potential within that topic. So they are often, you know, a lot of things SEO have in mind from, from a lot of, you know, SEO internal KPIs. But I think as her, uh, as higher, actually the level um, revenue is the most important thing. Okay. And in terms of planning for a migration, ideally, how much time do you need to plan for a migration? And what do you actually need to keep track of um, while you're actually carrying out that migration? It, it depends, I think, again, on, on, the, on the size of the domain. Sometimes if, you, if, you have, if, if your website is not that big, you know, you are, you are a smaller company or something like that, and you have a really engaging team or, or so, sometimes three to six months can be enough. So if everyone is really focused. I mean, a, a migration, a relaunch always means that you know, resources are maybe focused on that specific topic. That means that other projects maybe are on hold or something like that. But if you do that for smaller websites, you may can, you know, have, have time durations of, of, of three to six months. But there are also these, these bigger migrations, which definitely are, you know, 12 months and even longer. So there is no one fits all solution. It's funny you saying maybe three to six months is enough because obviously I'm sure many SEOs will have experienced um, a call from um, marketing to say, oh, by the way, we're, sh we're moving our website next week. Is there anything yeah, you have yeah. to do? <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, you, if, you, if you do that and SEO is an important part actually of your marketing mix and, and your revenue driver, you will probably pay for that with missing revenue after the migration. So what about post-migration? Is there anything that, um, I mean, if the migration has gone relatively well, is there anything that you really still have to keep track of just to make sure that um, nothing bad still occurs, even though you think it's gone okay? Yeah, probably I would say that, or at least from my experience, if the migration went bad, you see that immediately. So within the next days. So as long as the period, everything looks quite fine, I would say done well. But um, after immigration, of course, oftentimes, even if you have a very, very good project plan and you have set milestones and you know what you actually want to achieve during immigration, sometimes you simply need to reschedule measures and, and, and you know, move them to, to the post, actually, uh, migration period can happen. And then after that, actually, you know, everyone is a little bit more relieved and sometimes it gets even, you know, fixed uh, faster. But um, at that point, you simply need to make clear what is really important, what is a must-have, what needs to be done. Otherwise, the, the migration needs to be rescheduled because it doesn't make any sense. And what is okay-ish, what is nice to have and can maybe be done after, after the migration. But yeah, at least a certain amount of, you know, post-migration monitoring, log files, ranking, traffic, and things like that 
should um, always be uh, in place. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time doing what you suggest in 2024? Well, again, I think when it when it comes down to immigration, he should firstly get more tools involved as soon as possible because I think that he probably will discover more things, different things which can help him within the communication. You know, if you use the same tool stack um, again and again and again, probably all your direct reports know them as well. And there's, you know, a lack of lack of maybe um, awareness for certain things. If you change, for example, tools, if you change the way you present your data, you get new and fresh and, um, awareness, possibly. So this is definitely something I would do. And again, I think it will help you during immigration period. So, and therefore, I think if you having an, an immigration uh, coming up, you should definitely do that. And you should also, you know, really stress internally that everything needs get uh, needs to be tested and that this will take time and you will probably, you know, remove some of your own resources, some of your own projects and move your capacity to the migration. Andrew Palo is an international SEO consultant, so you can find him over at andropalo.com. Andrew, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Thanks for having me. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at seoin2024.com.